Judy Ann, you're over at KFW's Development Finance Forum right now, where you sat on a panel that discussed the effectiveness of behavior change communications tools. One of the things that was consensual on the panel was that in order to be effective, you need to have the right kind of mix of tools. How do you make sure that you have that right kind of mix? How can you assess that upfront? It's really context specific because you have to know what's available in that particular target area or with that target population and then what they are most likely to respond to. Um, do they give TV a lot of credibility? How much do they watch, for example? Are they more used to street theater? Um, is interpersonal communication more important because you have to reach them right in their household? So it depends on the context and you have to study that up front. It does take some investment early on to make sure that you're using the right mix, that you're reaching people in the best possible way. Do you think that development cooperation is making enough use of behavior change communications if you compare it to conventional extension and all the other ways and means that development budgets are spent on? Actually, even agriculture extension is behavior change communication. I think that it's been applied first and it was developed in the field of public health, but the principles equally apply whether you're talking about natural resources or agriculture or income generation. You're still asking people to adopt new, te new technologies, new practices, or to um, in some way change, modify what they're doing. We use the example of we have to get health workers, for example, to change their behavior before we can ask them to or to change their attitudes before we can ask them to help mothers change and adopt new practices. So it kind of goes through the whole system. Um, I think we could use more mass media, more of the, what would you say, marketing kind of techniques um, with, for example, new agriculture technologies or with health practices with whatever. A lot of the social marketing principles could apply across the board. If you think how some of these bad food companies are actually promoting their products, they use advertisement campaigns that target small children already. Don't you think sometimes that it would be better to use proper regulation rather than trying to come up with behavior change communications campaigns that have to compete with advertisement campaigns of large corporations that have big budgets available to them. Yeah, that's an uphill battle, we know, against the junk food and the marketing money that they can put in. But at the same time, there are campaigns coming out. There's a really effective one in the U.S. right now um, directed at children themselves, trying to get them to change their behavior using the exact same marketing techniques that the marketing marketers are doing. but putting them in the, the role of being the responsible person for making healthy decisions. So we'll see how effective it is, but it seems like there's potential for that. We can't take the, the marketing companies on head on, but maybe with some very well thought out campaigns, we can combat some of what they're, they're doing. If you think of how many projects out there nowadays have communications budgets available to them, but they're only making use of them for their public relations not really in terms of interventions itself, like behavior change. What is your message to the donors, to the implementers out there in that regard? I think that it's really time to take communication seriously and not just mass media as we've traditionally thought about it. We're not just talking television, but for example, if you go to a country like Indonesia, everybody there, even the poorest rice farmer, is sending SMS messages to his neighbor or to his son in the city or somewhere. So to capitalize on that, the telecommunications that have become so widely available, I, we st still may be making a leap to go to, say, computer based technology, but definitely we could be using the cell phone technology to a greater degree. Um, we should be investing still in television and radio where it is appropriate. And there are government subsidies in a lot of countries for what they call um, public service announcements, where there actually is free airtime. And I've been in countries where the media companies will say, we don't have enough content to fill those slots. If you can come up with a good campaign, we'll be more than happy to air it because we have to meet our obligation. Community radios and so forth. There's a lot of community radio everywhere. And so again, figuring out what your target population really watches, what do they listen to. There's no money in putting, or no point in putting 
money into community radio if it, nobody's listening to radio anymore if they're all watching television. So you do have to make those distinctions. But if it's a channel that's reaching people, then we should use it. You mentioned M&E on the panel. Do you have any data available to you to tell donors which particular means are more effective than others? Um, no. Actually, we have the contrary data that you need to use a combination. Um, mass media alone can only change knowledge. It rarely changes or less changes behavior. Um, the data I presented there was you get three times as much effect if you combine it with interpersonal co communication. So if you do a mass media campaign plus train somebody to be able to answer questions and talk to those individuals, you'll get three times the amount of um, effect for your investment. So you need to do the combination. You can't just go with mass media alone. But if you have something that is just asking people to take on one specific behavior, it's something that's already well known that they don't need a lot of um, persuasion about, then mass media can be effective. And at least it's a way to open a lot of doors and reach a lot of people cost efficiently. Thank you very much.